So Emma, uh, what are you observing and things that you're paying close attention to in terms of the fallout of, of this banking crisis and, and the events um, leading up to the collapse of SVB? And then what do you see happening or think are going to keep an eye on in the next few weeks as this plays out as somebody who's looking at more on the EM side and on the Pakistan side of things? Yeah, thank you, Zair, and it's great to be part of this uh, panel. Um, I think whatever happens in the U.S. on the financial side, we saw it in 1998, we saw that in 2000, 2008, it's multiplied multiple times uh, in emerging markets. When, uh, when the U.S. Um, suffers, there's a financial loss over there, there is a flight for quality, and the, which basically means that every EM investment is pulled back, it pulls back within the U.S. to what they know, and the risk appetite goes down. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the biggest institutional capital market in the world is the USA. So, uh, so uh, when the money moves, both on the positive side, there was, so when, when you had a lot of interest of US investors in Pakistan, I would say that was not all positive because some of the money went into, you know, uh, into um, deals that, that should not have been unfunded to that extent. There is, there is such a thing called an overfunded startup or, or too much capital slushing around in, a, in an economy. And I think that happened in Pakistan. And I think that, that distorts the incentives. Uh, but of course, when the reverse happens and that money is pulled out, uh, it, it, you know, uh, there's a huge effect in terms of funding, in terms of job losses, in terms of collapse. And I think we're going to see the play out um, over a period of time. But I think let me draw out because I formerly have been an investment banker, then I was a private equity investor, I was an operator, and now I'm, I'm in VC. So this has happened before. Um, you know, 5th December 1996, we know a gentleman by the name of Alan Greenspan, he made a speech and he called it irrational exuberance. So we've been there before, uh, you know, Salman, we've been there before many times that there was an, uh, irrational exuberance and what happened in 2000 was a result of it. I think what we saw in COVID was irrational exuberance. We saw that Silicon Valley banks deposits increased by three times in a short period of time, um, and they didn't know what to do with it. And frankly, uh, you know, they made a lot wrong bet, uh, long duration um, uh, treasuries, um, and as a result, you know, they have made they've made losses on that. But I think what we see as Silicon Valley bank um, collapse or near collapse of it, I think it is going to be replicated across VC in the Silicon Valley. Uh, a reason why Sil uh, is the uh, Silicon Valley Bank is just the starting point of it. They, they've just materialized the losses uh, from, uh, from a uh, huge portfolio that they had and they didn't know what to do with it. The same problem, by the way, is also with the VCs in the Silicon Valley who taken in a lot of money some of the investments that they have put in are not in the right places. Think about it like US treasuries, but that is being marked to market. Some of the VC investments are not marked to market, but in a year's time and two years time, a lot of those losses are gonna materialize. And I think we're gonna see the similar kind of um, uh, fallout in VCs, a lot of them will close down shop because they raise too much money. I think I think it's, it, it, it was a good problem to have, but there is a limit to how much money you can take and how much money you can deploy. And I think the deployment side of it, people went a bit over the board on it. I, I think if I take that problem into Pakistan, I think what, what happened was, again, there was a case of irrational exuberance in 2000, 2001, 2022, early part of it. And I think what it showed in, we are a people who are very prone to irrational exuberance, you know, uh, what we call believing our own propaganda. So there has to be very tight governance and control on us. We do talk a very good story and very convincing story, but that story has to be embedded in reality and has to be held down with very strong corporate governance. And unfortunately, some of the VC funds and probably coming from abroad did not have either the knowledge, the understanding, or the governance mechanism to hold down founders or companies to high standards of corporate governance. And hence, money went in different directions. It hasn't done the work that it should have done for Pakistan. And I think what has happened as a result of it is that a lot of money has, you know, not, um, and not gone into value creating activities that it has done, uh, that it should have done for a society, for an economy like Pakistan. Um, and what the first lesson that we have learned from this, and I think it's going to happen, it has, we have already learned, is, is operations matters. Um, that, that, that just knowing strategy, just knowing terminology is not sufficient. That, that founders with subject matter expertise 
who have been there, who have run logistics warehousing rather than from some other background and have some connections to have raised the money, they are, do much better. So that is probably one thing that um, uh, that that has already happened uh, before SVB. That that there is a flight towards those founders or the quality founders who are much more operational, much more hands-on, and less. Uh, you know, tech focused uh, in that sense. The second thing that is going to happen, that's going to happen as a result of SVB is that treasury matters, CFO matters. It's not about, all about product manager. So we, you know, there's this whole glorification of this role called product manager and product manager could save the day because it's all about growth, 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 growth. But actually the, the, in our markets, what's more important is cash control, cash management. That's always been the case. Tech fundamentally doesn't change anything, uh, uh, the fundamentals of finance. That good cash flows need to be managed, leakages need to be controlled, treasury needs to be managed. Anyway, even in Silicon Valley, it's not easy, to, it's not right to think to say that the bank, that the CEO should not know the treasury aspects of it. It is his business to know it. I remember Jeff Skilling of uh, Enron saying in his, his testimony, uh, oh, I don't know, um, uh, you know, I don't know mark to market accounting. Uh, and what does that mean? Uh, but it is his business to know what what those things are, and and these are things that are very important because ultimately it's not about it's the, it, tech in the long run can can earn you you know huge valuation, but ultimately in the short run uh, cash flow is uh, is important. So that's the second thing that we're going to find out that traditional roles like treasury, like CFO, are going to become more important in start in, in startup. And, and the third thing of that is going to happen is that tech um, has going to become a bit more boring. From, from what it has been. And a bit more boring, the same is gonna become a bit more grounded. Uh, real tech value creation is not about breakneck speed growth. It's about, you know, it's about uh, improving the system, digitizing the local system. And I'm talking about in the context of Pakistan where the technology is, is not, it is, I would say it's an incremental technology that we are deploying or we are digitizing existing physical infrastructure uh, that that the, that that kind of excitement is going to go away from it uh, and and it's going to become more grounded those businesses that are more rooted in reality of economy the infrastructure that we have are going to do very well they would probably take 5 years or 7 years to get where previously they were planning to get at the end of one year or three years but that's what's going to uh, that's what's going to win so that's the third thing that that's going to uh, be important. I think the fourth thing is uh, some of the regional investors, and I wouldn't name them, one regional investor that invested in Pakistan at the place had $200 million worth of capital or worth of deposits in Silicon Valley Bank. They invest in Middle East as well in Pakistan. And I think that money being stuck or that money, is, um, you know, having a setback on that money or taking some time for that money to come through will definitely mean that less of this global money is going to find and can find its way into countries like Egypt, into Pakistan, or into into the GCC. And I think I think that's not all bad thing. I think it could be a mixed bag. And the, the reason why it could be a positive thing is there's a lot of silly money that floats around that creates unnecessary competition and that, that um, uh, bloats up asset prices, that bloats up value of talent, and you end up wasting a lot of money because you have to compete with someone who's raised $5 million or $10 million, don't know what to do, and just going and throwing that money around. And I think that thing, when it's the money that died that goes back, I think that will be overall positive for the quality founders, quality startups, more grounded founders, and more grounded business models. I think these are the, some of the things I can, I can add more but I'll, I'll uh, push it, I'll pull it, push it back in your direction, Zed.